Hey, good evening, everybody. It's a busy weekend. Um, got a lot going on. You guys already know that. We're here for within the madness. This is the men's business. I find out Ellie Jr. Raymond Lyons up top as well. Wilson Tarpe Jr. And again, welcome to Within the Madness, the men's edition. Uh, the men's side of the brackets, rather. We're going to get started. Um, tonight, two regions are in play. Uh, you know, it's the Elite Eight for the men's. Folks fighting for the right to go play in the Final Four. Um, and then figure out who's going to be representing uh, in the championship game. But um, today we got two games. Uh, we got a game currently going on at the minute. Then we got one late game tonight. Uh, 15 seed Oral Roberts. Y'all have heard a lot from Raymond and Cardell about them throughout this. Uh, they take it on third seed Arkansas in the South region. And, uh, you know, they have a three point lead with 755 left in the second half. Then later tonight, uh, we have we got um, Houston taking on Syracuse. That's going to be a two eleven matchup. And that should be fun because again, you guys already know Cardell and Ray both shared that zone does things to people. You can throw some of them numbers out the window if you're not familiar with it. It has a very uh, interesting effect on some folks. I mean, it's always fun to see how people react to it if they haven't had to deal with it at all. Uh, we're going to start tonight with, um, look, man, Loyal in Chicago. They, they've, they've done some damage in this tournament. Oh, uh, man, I hate to be the one to tell you guys if you're not aware. Um, they failed today to 12 seeded Oregon State, 65 58. Ricardo and Ray want to hear you guys' thoughts on uh, Oregon State advancing. They can, um, Loyola Chicago kind of take advantage of an ice cold first half from Oregon State. They were ice, ice cold. I mean, ice cold. Like, yo, they ain't shot a ball in like a week. Um, Oregon State defense saved them mm -hmm. for, you know, just, just holding Loyola Chicago down enough to where when they finally got going at the end of the first half, they got a rhythm and uh, Loyola couldn't keep up. Uh, that's that. That was honestly the difference in the game. If Loyola would have scored more points and had a bigger lead on it, well, had the lead but had more of a double-digit lead, which they should have had going into the halftime. I'm not sure if Oregon could have walked them down, but they they couldn't. They allowed. They they couldn't get going. I mean, they made more shots at first, but they couldn't separate themselves again and build that lead to a point where Oregon couldn't go on a run. Once Oregon did, did it, it, it was a wrap at the first half, but then in the second half, both teams kind of woke up. And it was a shootout, but Oregon just had a, had more firepower, you know. So led by Ethan Thomas, I Thompson, who had you know had 20 points. Um, you know, it, it it was the athleticism of Oregon just kind of, you know, you saw the difference between the two teams uh, as as the game went down the stretch. Um, also, a big game. I don't want to butch his name. Warworth Alatiche. Six seven, but he plays like he's six. He's six seven, but he plays like he's six eleven. Long, athletic, bouncy forward. Uh, had a double double, ten points, eleven rebounds, two points. He was a big reason why Loyola couldn't get going. Um, that to me, that was just a difference in the game, man. Uh, it, it, I think nerves had a lot to play. Had a lot to do with it. Um, you know, at this stage, it, it gets real. You know, what I'm saying you start feeling the pressure, you start feeling it getting close to Final Fours right there, Elite Eight, Final Four. You start seeing the end of the tunnel, and uh, you know, guys get tight. But uh, Loyola, they had their chances, man. But you know, I just feel like Oregon State executed better as the game went along. All right, Ray. Yeah, man. Oregon State, they just they just on one of those runs right now, man. They um. You know, their, their season actually almost came to an end in the uh, Pac-12 quarterfinals. But, um, you know, they tucked that game through, and they they haven't lost since, obviously. But um, should we talk about Syracuse zone? Uh, Oregon State kind of threw a little zone at Loyola Chicago, doing mm -hmm. for a loop a little bit. Like, they were determined. Like, they saw what Cameron Krupp would be been doing to people. <laughs> and they, they was like, not us. And, um, you know, they threw multiple bodies at them. They they centered their defense around him, you know. They didn't they didn't allow him to create, or when he you know when he when he did was able to get the ball, you know they they didn't give him any room, and they just said the others are going to have to beat us. And um, you know outside of Crutwick, uh, the other starters were one for eighteen in the first half for Loyola Chicago, you know, and obviously they didn't score well because as a team they had sixteen at the half, 
So, I mean, if you can lock a team down like that, then for any stretch of the game, then you know, nine times out of ten will win. Like I said, both of the teams will slow out the gate. But, um, you know, Oregon defense, they they held they they held them down. And then they were able to, um, you know, to get some shots to fall going into the half. And then at the second half, they was basically just trading baskets, you know, with them already having the eight-point cushion. That that was it, man. And, um, you know, kudos to them, man. They game plan perfectly. You know, they saw, um, you know, the Georgia Tech zone gave all the Chicago problems in the first game of the tournament. So, you know, I'm pretty sure they looked at that and was like, well, man, we can we can use those principles to kind of, you know, to, to slow them down. And, uh, you know, and it worked out for them. Uh, you know, shout out to them. This is the furthest they've been in the tournament ever. So, um, yeah, man, it's just, it's just nice to see the – the, the little guys get get some love, man. And this was what was this a a twelve eight matchup? Like yeah, it's, it's, well, yeah. Like it's rare you see you know two teams seated that low, this deep, uh, in the in the tournament. So um, so yeah, like Cardell mentions often on the program, like those the name on that front on the front of the jersey is getting less and less important by the year. You you got to play, man. So um, so yeah, man. But no, it was um. It's good to see, you know, games being decided on the end of the floor when you don't have the basketball. You know, you you got to stop somebody because with the way Oregon was playing um, on the offensive end, if they weren't playing defense, they would have got smacked. So, um, so yeah, man, good, uh, shout out to them for for getting the job done. Yeah, and I just want to provide a correction real quick. Cardell looked out for me. I'm getting ahead of myself. We are not at the Elite Eight. This is the Sweet 16. This is me trying to speak this thing into existence. Things moving quicker, so ignore me right now. So sorry about that, but we're going to move on to the South region uh, for tonight. Baylor, 1-5 matchup here. Uh, Baylor sends Villanova home. 62-51 win for Baylor. I guess, Ray, you can go first this time since Cardell went first last time. Yeah, uh, they they killed him in the second half, man. They um, you know, they just said we are gonna put our head down and get to the basket and punish y'all, and that's exactly what they did. You know, they they went away from the three point shot. Uh, I think they only attempted three in the entire half, and they limited Villanova's three point shooting, was which is a strength of theirs. And um, and again, they they dug down on defense. They forced sixteen turnovers, uh, which led to twenty two points for Baylor. And they took care of the ball. They only had six turnovers themselves. So that's that's game right there. When you can when you can get extra possessions like that and capitalize on them without giving them the ball back, then you know that's that's a huge um a huge plus for um for them. So uh so yeah, man, they they just turned it up in the second half. And um, you know, Vill- Villanova just couldn't counter. Um Baylor, man, their defense, their length, their activity, their toughness, man, it was it was just overwhelming. And uh Villanova just didn't have an answer for them. Um Baylor and Florida State are similar. They have a lot of long, rangy athletes that's versatile and they can strap up. The difference is they got they got guys that can put the ball in the basket a lot better. They got guys that can shoot. Uh for instance, you know, Flagler, he only averages eight this season, but he came off the bench. And had 16. He was huge in the, you know, in the dog fight because both teams were well coached. You know what I'm saying? And they both execute well on, on, in every aspect. Um, I feel like turnovers, uh, Baylor, their left bothered Villanova, and uh, you know, turn them over, and um, they couldn't recover. Whereas Villanova couldn't turn them over. I know Samuels and Justin Moore, who's a local product, they had good games, efficient games and whatnot, but nobody else could get going. Um, which you really see, uh, it, it came down to the guard play. Um, Villanova missed Gillespie bad. You know, I know he got hurt early in the year, but he was the he's the second leader scorer on that team. The he leads the team in assists, senior floor general. This is the time they needed him, and but he, he went out early in the season with a knee injury, so um, it wasn't as it, it, it is what it is, you know. Chris Archionato, um, he tried his best. You know what I mean, but against that, that's NBA athleticism and size, man. You know he he can he come bang with that, man. You know it is what it is. So they took advantage. You know what I mean. Without that guard play, they had to rely on others to try to create. You know specifically Justin Moore, and, and they had to do it by committee. But 
you know, it couldn't be done. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Baylor's just bigger, you know, bigger and they longer and they more athletic across the wing and they're, and they're versatile. Like they can switch and still play guard. They can switch and still play the four. Whereas Villanova, they got more of a traditional lineup. If you a guard, you a guard. If you got to switch, you're in trouble. So that's why they ran away with it in the second half. Um, obviously, neither team shot well from three-point range or whatnot. Uh, so it really came down to the turnovers. And with Villanova having 16 and Baylor having six, and Baylor capitalizing off of those 16, uh, it was really nothing uh, Villanova could do, man. Had they took care of the ball, like I said, they missed your Lesby. Had they took care of the ball, who knows how this would have went. This, this would have went down to the wire, possibly overtime. But the turnovers were the difference. They gave Baylor extra possessions. They got off the run to do what they do best, and that's finished. And um, that was all she wrote, especially in the second half. Yeah, and uh, one of the things, like you mentioned, talking about the the size the size advantage Baylor had. Um, Gillespie's a big guard, too. Um, you know, he, he's been able to pick on some folks with his size this year. So, you know, they definitely, definitely missed him. Uh, any specific games you guys looking forward to tomorrow? You know, with some good games today? Oh, oh of course. Florida State, Michigan, of course. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, kind of question that you should already hey, know. What that is. Hey, it wasn't for y'all. It's kind of for those watching to make sure they understand. Come on now. Got some heat tomorrow. Yeah, that, 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 that. I had a big boy match up tomorrow. <laughs> and not in, in, in a close second, in a, in a close second, Oregon, USC. I'm looking forward yeah. to them too. They come out 945. Yeah. So, but yeah, that Florida State Michigan game, that's, <laughs> you know, that's heavy. That's a heavyweight. That's, you know, that's that's Tyson Holyfield, Tyson Lennox Lewis. You know what I'm saying? We, we need to see that. Yeah. Uh, like you guys were talking about the other night, the, the length, uh, the NBA size both of those teams have is going to be fun. And how to get after it on the defensive end, it's going to be fun. And coached by two dudes that have the NBA experience coaching. Yeah. One as an assistant, one as an assistant and head coach. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be fun. So, I want to thank you guys for hanging out with us tonight. We're going to see you tomorrow night for Within the Madness on the men's side of the bracket. Like Cardo was just mentioned, some great games tomorrow as well. Uh, we'll be back in a few minutes. Got to talk about the women's games today. Had action on both sides of the brackets.